Hi, welcome to Managing Student Grades with the Blackboard Grade Center. My name is Stephanie Richter. I'm the Assistant Director of the Faculty Development and Instructional Design Center at Northern Illinois University. My contact information is here on the slide, but I will come back to that at the end, so if you don't catch it now, I'll, I'll put it back up at the end of the workshop. I would ask, for those of you who are participating today, please save your specific questions about your particular grading system for the end. I'll save some time for questions, so if you want to know how to uh, proportionally weight three tests that are worth different numbers of points, um, or if you want to know how to add extra credit for um, three different assignments but only for certain groups, those sorts of really specific questions, um, I'd rather answer at the end after we've gone through the majority of the, the content. If you have a question about any step that I've shown, please do uh, feel free to interrupt, ask me to repeat that or explain uh, something that maybe I glossed over on the screen. But just so that we don't interrupt um, those who may not honestly benefit from your very specific question, I'd like to make sure that they get their the general information first. Uh, if you do have a specific question and you want to put it in the text chat, uh, just know that I may not answer it until the end, but it is there and I will follow up with you if necessary. And feel free as well to send me those specific questions after the workshop via email and I or one of my colleagues would be more than happy to answer them that way as well. I want your questions answered, don't worry about that. So when we talk about using the Grade Center, um, there are common things that we hear from faculty and instructors when they come to us to say, well, I need to use the Grade Center because I want my students have asked to know what their grades are. Or um, I used to keep a grade book, but instead of keeping a grade book, I want to just track my grades in Blackboard. How can I do that? So the traditional reasons for using the Grade Center tend to be focused on communicating grades to students tracking the student's grades, and eventually calculating a final grade. And these are all perfectly valid reasons for using the Grade Center. As we talk about it today, though, I kind of want you to think about it a little bit differently. Instead of looking at it administratively, I'd rather look at it as um, a way for you to connect with your students in yet another way. So I think the Grade Center is more effective when you think about it as a way to provide feedback to your students on their performance. It's not just about telling them their grade, that's much more administrative, whereas providing them with feedback is more about growth and development and letting them know maybe what they need to work harder on or improve some skills at um, as the course progresses. So more than just what's my grade, focus more on the, the feedback and the growth. It also lets you monitor your student's achievement. When you can see all of the grades together and it calculates a running total for you, it's easier to, easier to tell which students maybe are struggling than it is from a single assessment. So I think the Grade Center also gives you a broader view. I would also say when you use the Grade Center, I didn't put that on the slide here, but it also let students monitor themselves more. So it's, again, more than just the administrative aspects of tracking grades for yourself, uh, keeping a record of the grades, and telling students what their grades are. There are far more, I think, affective approaches. And that can change both the type of information you put in the Grade Center and uh, how frequently you put information in the Grade Center. For more information on the Grade Center in general, we have a wealth of documentation on our Teaching with Blackboard site. It, the website is niu.edu slash blackboard. And then the Grade Center is in our section on assessing learners. So again, in that section, we have some step-by-step -step instructions. We have quick guides that will show you how to give you the steps for how to complete tasks. And we have some video tutorials that will walk you through how you um, really do most of what I'm going to show you today. 
So if you have questions after the workshop, I highly recommend um, niu.edu slash blackboard to get some more information. And I'll put this up again at the end of the workshop. Before we do a demo so you can actually see the Grade Center, I'd like to talk a little bit about some of the features that you'll find when you use the Grade Center. Um, one of the first ones is simply it lets you enter the grades. And you can enter them directly into the sort of spreadsheet view, almost like you were using Excel. And not only can you enter the grades, the actual scores, but you can also add comments to give students some more feedback. So when, once you've entered that they got a particular grade, you can go back and add a comment for them that says what they could have done to improve or what they did really well that earned them the grade that they got. I would also point out that students can view the changes you make in the Grade Center right away. There is no delay between when you enter something and when students can benefit from seeing it. So it's a very quick means of communication. Students do have to uh, know to go and look for their grades, but uh, they, they can see them. You don't have to push them, publish them, enable them. They just automatically are distributed. The Grade Center also can automatically calculate totals, either straight point-based totals or weighted totals that um, perhaps differentiate by a, a percentage for a particular value for a column. Uh, what it cannot do as a feature is a custom formula. So you, you can't create a formula like you would in an Excel spreadsheet to um, combine columns together. You have to work within the, the total weighted total um, scheme. But I do find that that is fairly flexible. Most of the time it is perfectly uh, applicable to most grading systems. And then you can also download the data in the Grade Center. And there are two reasons why you would do that. One is to work offline. So if you knew that you were going to maybe be traveling somewhere away from internet access for a while, you could download the Grade Center as an Excel spreadsheet and bring that file with you, make changes to grades right um, in that Excel spreadsheet, and then import that back into the Grade Center to update those values once you have an internet connection again. The other reason you would download the data is to archive the information. So we highly recommend at the end of each semester that you actually download your Grade Center as an Excel spreadsheet that you can keep it on your computer with the other records you have from the, the course. The information is kept in Blackboard for a minimum of 13 months, just in case of a grade appeal. However, it is beneficial for you to have that, um, I think, within your own control and in your own records as well. So there are many, many more features, but I think you would probably benefit most just by seeing it. So just a moment while I set up the uh, application share. All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. Give me a check mark if you would to let me know that you can see Blackboard. All right, looks good. Thank you very much. Um, so first, you may notice that this is not uh, an instructor's view. This is a student's view of a course that they're taking. It, it happens to be a, one of our shells that we use for training. It's not a live course in the system. So all student data is perfectly protected. This is all fake data. But let me show you what students see when you have made grades available to them. Within Blackboard, by default, your course menu will have a link for My Grades. If you've clicked on it in a course that you're teaching, you may have found that you don't get to see what students see. And that's unfortunate. So let me show you what students see. Here under My Grades, Blackboard currently shows their current grade at the top. And I'll talk a, mid, a bit in a moment about what that means, that it's the current grade and how that's determined. But it gives, right now, it's giving a total of 219.5 out of 270. And I can actually click the grading criteria to see that this is a running total of all of the grades. So it's kind of nice. 
it doesn't give you much information under grading criteria, but I can at least see a little bit more. There's also a calculated grades area for a weighted total. And right now, it's not showing anything. So as a student, my assumption would be that my professor is not using the weighted total. You can, by the way, and I'll show you how you can delete things that you aren't using so that they don't confuse students like this. Uh, because a student may wonder why, why is there a calculated grades area if it isn't being used. Below calculated grades is a section for all of the items that have been graded. So here I have a book review with a grade of 42 out of 50, a test 2, etc. If I had, and I don't happen to have, that was an oversight, um, if I had items, columns in the grade center that did not yet have grades entered, those would actually show up here at the bottom as to be graded. So here we have, in descending order from the most recent to the last, the items that have been graded. And then below that list would be every column in the Grade Center that does not yet have a grade marked as um, still to be graded or upcoming. Within these graded sections, if you will, I can get some more information on some of them. For example, quiz number two has a comments link. And if I click on the comments link, the comment that the instructor put in said, much better than the last one. So that's a good note to myself that there's improvement. When an area does not have comments, that's an indication to me as a student that there, is not, there are not any comments left for me. In some cases, for example, this book review, I can view some comments. Overall, fairly good. It needs more citations, and it was late. And then if I click on the link for book review itself, this will give me an inline graded view. This was an assignment as opposed to just a column in the Grade Center. So when you create an assignment, then your students can see the comments that you've left as well as the, um, the grade and the general comments over here. Are there any questions so far? Let me take a moment. I'm going to clear out my <laughs> browser, make it a little bit easier to focus. OK. Doesn't look like there are any questions right now. Feel free, as I said, to put those into the text box uh, chat at any time. The other way that students can view their grades is by going to the global navigation menu at the top here. So if I click on the student's name, in the drop down, there is an option here for grades. And that's the page with the check and the plus. Here, I happen to have 20 as a notification number, which means that there are 20 new grades that I have not yet looked at as a student. So here, I can see by date when those grades were posted. And notice that they're not all for the same course. Some of them are for course six, some are for course four. Uh, here's one for seven and 14. So all of the students' grades from all of their courses are actually combined onto this one single page in my Blackboard. I can also view them by course, which gives me the total grade for each course. And if I click on the course, it gives me a view of the grades to the right. So I get this sort of side-by-side -side view where I can see the grades for all of my courses and how those break down overall. So as a student, I can see my grades for a single course by going to that course. I can also see my grades for all of my courses by going to my Blackboard by using that global navigation menu. I should mention as well that the grades feature is part of the mobile app. So students who are using the Blackboard mobile app can view their grades from their smartphones when they log into the app. Again, it doesn't look like there are any questions, so I'm going to keep moving and actually go and look at the Grade Center in a course that I'm teaching. So now I'm in a course that has uh, the edit mode on, and I have control panel access. So this now, I know, is a course that I am teaching. The Grade Center is in the control panel below your course menu. 
So I'm going to click on Grade Center, and that opens up a submenu. We'll talk a little bit more about how these work and why you have, for example, assignments and tests listed here at the bottom. But for now, I can click on Full Grade Center. One tip for working with the Grade Center, you don't have to click Grade Center and then Full Grade Center. You can actually click the sort of caret arrow pointing to the right, right next to Grade Center, and that will take you directly to the Grade Center view. I'm a big fan of decreasing the number of times I have to click. So using the um, opening Grade Center and clicking Full Grade Center is just more work than I want to do. <laughs> it's one extra click every time I go to the Grade Center. So I like to just use that caret to the right. Let me give you a brief overview of the Grade Center interface here, the view. So by default, you have some columns that are standard in your Grade Center. The first is students' last names, their first name, their username. Here, these are SU because these are our sample accounts. For students, it would be their ZID. The student ID column is blank. It will tell you when they last accessed the course, which is the last time they logged into Blackboard and then clicked on your course. It's a good way to tell, for example, um, Willa Cather has not logged into my course since March 19th. Given that it's now October, that's probably a problem. But you can use this to tell maybe which students need to be reminded to come back and access something within Blackboard. The availability column here will always say available but it's a default column. And then you have two others, a weighted total and the total column. And I'll talk more about how those are set up, but these two columns can automatically calculate your grades. You will also notice in this view that I have a lot of scroll bars going on here. Uh, there's one to the far right that scrolls sort of the entire course view. There's a scroll bar sort of closer to the columns to the right. This one scrolls through the students. And this, grade, this uh, the scroll bar at the bottom of the grade center scrolls the columns back and forth. Depending on how wide your browser is, you may see a scroll bar at the very bottom of your browser as well. So I like to work with this in as large of a view as I can to cut down on all of these scroll bars. But just know that there are two different scroll bars. As a tip, if any of you are Mac users, the latest versions of the Mac OS hide scroll bars by default. And it's supposed to give a cleaner, more modern look, and I agree that it does. However, that can be problematic in the Grade Center where if you can't see the scroll bar, you may have trouble scrolling your columns to the right or scrolling down the list of students. To overcome that, you can go into the settings, the system preferences on your Mac, and change the setting for scroll bars to always show scroll bars. That will help immensely for you as you navigate through your grade center. Just a moment here. Yeah, Stuart, you're agreeing. <laughs> we get a lot of calls. Why can't I see all of my columns? And it's because it's a Mac and the scroll bars are turned off. So that's my, my first general tip for you with working with the Grade Center. We also, you may notice that there's a small sort of orangish yellow triangle at the top of the last name column. This is the sort indicator. This tells me that right now my Grade Center is being sorted from A to Z by last name. If I would rather sort it by first name, I would click on the first name column, and notice not only does that triangle move over, but now my students are sorted by first name. If I click it a second time on first name, then the arrow moves to the bottom of the column header, and they're sorted reverse by, less, by first name. You can do this to any of the columns so that you can see perhaps which students have accessed the course most recently or have not accessed for the longest. You can also do it to sort, perhaps if you wanted to see which students were doing the best, and then you wanted to see maybe which students were struggling. Um, the sort, I think, helps really well with looking at 
what's actually in your grade center. To go back to last name sort, I'll just click on last name. The other sort of strange symbol you may see here is the total has a green check mark. This is the external grade indicator. And that means that total right now is basically designated as the final grade in the grade center. It's called external grade because the value in this column is the same value that shows up to the left in the My Grades view for each course. It's also ultimately, uh, it's also used in the retention center. The external grade here is what is used to determine which students are excelling or struggling in your course. And it's also the column that would be sent to my NIU if you use the grade submission tool. So for the most part, that green check mark doesn't make a big difference in your course. But it's important to have it on the column that is calculating your students' grades. So if you wanted to move it from total to maybe a weighted total, if you were using that, you would click on the drop down here next to weighted total and choose set as external grade. You can't get rid of the green check mark, but you can move it from one column to another. You'll also notice that the grade center has a gray bar here. It's kind of the grade center toolbar. And we'll go through in more detail what each of these buttons do, but know that these are either buttons, as in create column, or they're menus, as in create calculated column, where you have several choices to choose from. Uh, we'll come back to those in more detail. I want to talk more first about setting up your grade center so that it really works for you. The first thing that I would recommend when you're getting set to dig into the grade center is hide your course menu. This bar to the left really takes up a lot of room, and you might want a little more space to stretch out. So if you mouse over the gray bar that's just to the right of the menu, you'll notice that this arrow pops out from there. If I click on this bar or on that arrow, that moves and slides the course menu closed. So now I have the full grade center view across my whole browser. And that also got rid of my scroll bar here at the bottom because right now, all of my columns fit on one page. It just makes me feel a little bit better having more room to work with. The other thing that you can do is hide or delete columns that you aren't going to use. So for these default columns, I can hide them. The student ID, since it's empty, that's usually one of the first things I do is hide this column from me and then I'll wait for it to refresh. And I also hide the availability column because, again, it always says available, so it's not giving me any valuable information. So I'll hide that column as well. Now I'm down to their names, their ID, when they access the course, and for now I'm going to keep both the weighted total and the total. Now I'm ready to start setting up the columns that are going to go into my grade center. Excuse me. <clears throat> so to do that, you would click Create Column. It's not terribly um, hidden. I think it's a pretty obvious option. So when I create the grade column, I give it a name. I'm going to call this um, Reflection Assignment 1 because my syllabus tells the students that maybe they have four reflection assignments that they need to complete. However, I'm going to also add a grade center name because the column name is really long and the column headers are a set width. So reflection assignment one is going to run off and be cut off. So by giving it a grade center name, now I have a short name in my grade center so that I can tell which column is which. It's a little bit of a trick. It's optional. If you're using short names in the first place, you don't need to enter a grade center name. I also normally skip the description. In the past, I have always skipped the description. But if you recall from looking at the My Grades view, now My Grades includes a description link. So I actually think it's beneficial now to add a more detailed description. So. Uh, I'm going to just provide a brief description. 
uh, you could provide more detail, something about the assignment or what it was or why students were completing it. You can also leave it empty. The description is technically optional. Below the description, you have a series of settings. One is for primary display. This is what students will see when they look at the grade in My Grades. It's also the first value that will show up to you in the column in the Grade Center. <coughs> Pardon me. The default option is score. You have a few other options, though. You can enter text. So I've seen this used if you wanted to enter um, maybe the dates for attendance, uh, if you're tracking when students were absent, or if you wanted to provide um, maybe a short OK or got it or something like that. You can enter plain text. It's not treated as a number. You can set your primary display to percentage. This would take whatever score students have earned and convert it to a percentage and allows you to enter percentages instead of raw scores. The letter option uses a grading schema in Blackboard. The default right now at NIU is the graduate school's grading scale. So it includes A, A minus, B plus B, B minus, C plus C, C minus, D and E. Um, and letter would translate their score into a percentage and then convert that to uh, the appropriate letter grade. If you're teaching an undergraduate course, you can edit the grading schema to remove the C minus. Um, I'm not going to cover that today, but know that that is possible. We felt at NIU that it was easier to remove a C minus than it was to add a C minus, which is why we included the C minus in the grading scale. There's also a complete or incomplete option. And what this will do is instead of displaying a score, it will display a check mark that shows that the assignment was actually complete and is empty until you enter something in. So incomplete is empty, complete is a check mark. You can set a secondary display. I'm going to choose percentage as a secondary display. The secondary display is only visible in the grade center, but it will let you see a score and a percentage yourself if you are interested. The categories are only applicable for weighted grading, um, or if you're going to use categories perhaps to change your total or to calculate an average column, something like that. If you're just doing a straight points total, you don't need to assign categories. However, if you're going to weight, then it's a good idea. I'm going to call this an assignment since it's a reflection assignment. And then the other item that's actually required is the points possible. So I'm going to say that this reflection assignment is worth 25 points. Below that, you can add a rubric to this column. Uh, we have a workshop on rubrics. I believe it's coming up in October, in fact. So you can register for that to learn more about how to select, how to create and use a rubric in Blackboard. But know that every column in the Grade Center can have a rubric associated with it. Below these settings, there's an option to set a due date. The due date has been around for a while in Blackboard, but it's recently, I think, become far more important. Because anything that you set a due date on is automatically added to the students' calendars in Blackboard. So if I turn on the due date and set it for Friday, then there will actually be an entry on the students' calendars in Blackboard that say that this is due on the 11th at 11.59 PM. This will also trigger a reminder when they log into your course. If you have the home page set as the entry point, there is a to-do module there that will tell students what is coming up as a do within the course. And that's driven by these due dates. The due date, incidentally, also shows up in the My Grades view. So again, one small checkbox, and you get a lot of value in terms of helping students organize themselves and see when their assignments are coming due. Section three, these are the standard options for the Grade Center. I can choose to include this column in Grade Center calculations. If I were 
including a column maybe just to track how many absences they had. It's not really points. Um, it's more notification and communication. I might say no. For anything that's an actual grade, however, I would keep it as yes. The second option is to show this column to students. I may want to create a column, but not let students know it's there yet. If that's the case, I would say no. I'm going to leave this one visible, but know that you always have that option, and you can change it. So if you say no initially when you've entered grades, then you can come back and say yes, and then students will be able to see the column and their grade. And then finally, you can show students some statistics about that column. If you turn this on, students will see the average and the median of all of the students for that column. And again, it's up to you to decide whether or not that's something that's appropriate or helpful for your students. Once you've made all of those settings, then you would click Submit. And the column is now visible here in my Grade Center. Note that Blackboard always puts new columns at the end, so you may need to rearrange them, and I'll show you how to do that in just a few minutes. A uh, question came in, can I show a column to specific students but not to all students? No, unfortunately there isn't a way to sort of adaptively release who gets to see this or not. It's either everyone or no one. You can exempt students from an assignment. so. If um, perhaps Louisa Elcott was excused from this reflection or didn't have to do it, I can choose to exempt the grade for her. However, that will still show the column. It will just show her that she is exempt. <coughs> You're welcome. Happy to answer your questions. So now that I've created one, I promise you it doesn't usually take this long. So I'm going to create a second one. And I'm going to create a second column for reflection assignment two. I'm going to shorten that to RA2. I want to see secondary display, category, 25 points possible. This one is going to be due the next week on the 18th and submit. So I just wanted to do two to show you that while it there are a lot of settings. Once you know what your selections are going to be, it can be a very quick process to create these multiple times. I'm going to do one more, in fact, for an exam. We'll call it exam one. Um, I'll see a percentage as well. We'll put it in the test category. This one's worth 100 points. And the test, maybe, is next Wednesday. Now that I have a few columns in here, notice I have my scroll bar back again. So I have more columns than what my browser can display next to each other. If I made a mistake, if I wanted to change something about one of these columns, then I click the drop down menu for the column, and I can choose my settings from the menu here. So quick column information will just show me a brief display of the settings I've chosen. If I want to edit the column, I would choose Edit Column Information. That basically reopens the page that I was just at to see what um, changes that I want to make. I'm going to enter a few grades here. This is out of 25. So to enter a grade, all I did was click on the cell that I want to enter a grade for, and then I'll type in the student scores. You can use decimals. Uh, it generally only wants two, <laughs> two decimal places, so don't put in anything terribly long. But notice as I do this that I'm getting the, um, oops, not four, uh, I'm getting both the score and the percent. Here's an example where I made a mistake. I typed in 4. I was actually meaning 24. So what I'll do is click on that grade again, delete what I entered, and type in the correct grade. Then press Enter. And it updates that score as soon as I've entered the new one. I'm going to enter a few for the second one as well, just so I have some data to work with. And um, 
you can see again scores and percentages. I've realized, let me sidetrack for just a second, I've realized that there's something wrong with this course. It is um, one of our sample courses, so it was not uh, restored to default properly. So let me make a quick change so that that's updated. There we go. What should have happened was as I entered these scores, the total should have updated as well. The weighted total here is updating because we have a weighted scheme in place. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So I've shown you how to enter grades. I've shown you how to change grades. You can simply delete a grade. If I delete the value here for reflection assignment 2 and press enter, that asks if I want to null this grade. And that's basically going to reset it as though nothing had ever been entered. <clears throat> and for this grade here, for the 24 for William Faulkner, that's the grade that I changed. I can track any of those changes by viewing the grade history. So if I go to view grade details, I can see what the most recent grade was, or I can see a grade history that shows me how it was changed over time. That was under grade details. This is really helpful if you have, uh, if you are a TA working with a faculty member or a faculty member who has a TA working for you, and maybe multiple people are changing grades, you can come in here and see who made the change and what it was changed to, to sort of track how those changes were made. <laughs> Sorry, just a moment. I also, however, said, uh, how far back, Stephen, um, how far back do the changes go is the question. They go back essentially to the history of time, essentially. Uh, from the very first grade that was entered, it tracks from there on. You can turn the tracking off. If I view the grade history for the column, um, I can clear it and refresh it, but I don't know why you would necessarily want to do that. You're essentially obscuring the data by doing that, and I think it's better to see the full grade history. So then I started by saying at the very beginning that the Grade Center should be about more than just telling students what their grade is, and so far that's all I've done is tell them what their grade is. Um, I can change that by adding comments. So once I've entered a grade, I can click the drop-down menu for a particular student's grade and open the quick comment view. That gives me a small pop-up where I can provide feedback to the user. Um, let's see here. Let's say your reflection should have been longer. It's very basic feedback, but you can provide that feedback and then I can click the Submit button. There's also a section for grading notes. These are private. And the only people who can see these are anyone of those in the course with an instructor or a TA or grader role. So the student cannot see what goes into the grading notes. This is where I might make a note of um, submitted late due to illness, if I wanted to let myself know why I made an excuse for this for the student, maybe. But I can make those two changes and click Submit. Notice there is no visible indication of it. Um, but if I quick comment again, those comments are saved there. The student then can see the comments, but not the grading notes, when they go to my grades in the course. Are there any questions on this so far? Just a moment while I take some water again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So as I said, Blackboard will put everything in order with the most recent entry at the end. So if I create another column for reflection assignment three, let me make all of my quick settings here. 
and it will be due the next Friday. When I create this column, Blackboard puts it at the far right. And that might be what I want. If I'm putting these sort of in chronological order, then maybe RA1 and RA2 occur before the exam one, and then RA3 is right after that. Or maybe I want to have these columns all together, uh, all of the RA columns, so that they're packaged neatly and I can see where they are. When you want to move things around, you want to use the Manage menu here and go to Column Organization, because that's what we're going to do is organize the view that we have. So here, this shows every column that's in your Grade Center, whether it is visible or not. So notice the two columns that I hid before, Student ID and Availability, are listed here, but they are hidden. If I wanted to change that, I would click the checkboxes and then use the Show Hide drop-down to show those columns. I'm not going to. I like them hidden. But no, if you hide something from yourself, it's still visible here. And then in the bottom section are the columns that I've created. So if I want to move RA3 up, I would click the crossed arrows to the left and drag that to the position I wanted it to be in. My display isn't quite refreshing properly. Um, so we'll place it here, even though it's not displaying, and click Submit, and it should have moved to the right place. There we have it, RA1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> I should point out, since I just talked about hidden columns, there are two different ways to hide the column. When you're editing a column, we saw the option to show or hide from students. Do you want this visible to students, yes or no? I can also hide it from students here. Notice that that's separate from hide column from instructor. There are two different settings because you may want to just hide it so that students can't see it. If I do that, I get this slashed icon in front of the column name. And I may want to hide it from my view as well. Note that in order to hide it completely from both you and from students, you need to do both. If you only hide the column from instructor, that does not hide the column from students as well. So hiding it from you removes it from the Grade Center, but still lets students see that column. So I think it's important to check before you hide from instructor that you hid it from students first. If I want to show this now to students, I click Show Hide, and now that icon has left. <coughs> There are, again, uh, times when you will not create new columns. Here, for all of my assignments and for my one exam, I just created the columns manually in Blackboard. If I'm going to have students complete an assignment or an exam through Blackboard, you do not want to create columns manually because Blackboard will create them automatically. So do not create columns manually for assignments, safe assignments, tests or surveys, um, or any graded activity like a graded discussion board, a graded blog, wiki, or journal. As soon as you mark that something is graded, then Blackboard will create a column for it. You won't be able to delete those automatic columns. You can only delete manual columns. But it can get confusing when you're not sure which assignment column you need to use. So keep that in mind as you're building out your Grade Center. Do not set up manual columns for anything that's going to be submitted through Blackboard. Are there any questions on that? That I know is kind of a, an odd distinction sometimes, but uh, it's an important one. OK. Looks like we're OK. Um, let's, I also wanted to look at these two calculated columns we have here, the total and the weighted total. I know I already went in quickly to edit the total column, but let me go in and edit that one again to show you how the total column is different from a regular column. Within the total, notice I can give it a, t a name, I can give it a grade center name, and I can give it a description. I can also choose a primary and a secondary display. I'll choose letter, just to see how that works. I can also 
decide which columns are included in the total. By default, all grade columns that are marked to be included in grade center calculations are included in the total as a as sum of the columns. If, however, you didn't want to include all of the columns, you can choose selected columns and categories. And here I could choose that I wanted the individual assignments and the exam, and those would all be included in the total. At that point, that's all of the columns, so it doesn't make much sense to do that individually. Uh, I'm just going to leave it as all grade columns. I can also choose whether or not I want to calculate the grades as a running total. The difference here is if you have not entered a grade yet, Blackboard assumes that it's not yet due and therefore, <coughs> pardon me, therefore does not include the points possible as part of the total points for the student. Let me change my secondary display to percentage so I can show you how that's different. If you're calculating as a running total, then those empty cells are just ignored and students may look like they have a higher grade than they really should have. Let me submit this change so I can show you how that looks. For example, here, notice that all of these students have grades in the 40s and percentages in the 80s and 90s. However, this final student only has a grade of 24, but has a percentage of 96. This student, if I click on them, has a points possible of 25, because I've only entered one grade for them. If they didn't complete this second reflection, I need to enter a zero. Now, that student has 24 out of 50 points possible, and the percentage that they've earned, their grade is now a 48%. So that's an important distinction to make. When you have grades, when you have your total calculating a running total, you need to enter zeros for any grade that's, for any value assignment that students don't submit or complete. I think this both communicates to the student that they did not complete it, and it allows the grade center to calculate properly. So I'm going to also add a quick comment here um, that you did not submit this assignment, just to remind the student that that was the case. Um, this is occasionally at the end of the semester, this becomes a problem where students think they have a higher score, a higher grade than they should, because they have missed a few assignments that don't have zeros, and their percentage is only reflecting those columns that grades were entered into. So do keep that in mind. I'm going to stop at this point and go back to the presentation for just a brief overview of a few more uh, things I'd like to highlight and then leave some time for questions. There are some settings, some features rather, that I have not told you about that are available in the Grade Center. One, I did actually point out that students can get a notification with those red numbers when new grades are posted. And it's a great way for students to know that you have posted a new grade and that there's something for them to pay attention to. You in the Grade Center can actually color code your Grade Center based on students' submissions and performance, etc. Uh, it's a bit more of a, an optional task, I think, because it is not uh, central to the mission of, or the purpose of the Grade Center, which is why we don't demonstrate it, but that is an option for you if you'd like to do that. You can also set up smart views in the Grade Center, and a smart view restricts the number of students or assignments columns that you see based on some criteria you set. For example, if you've made groups, you can set a Grade Center smart view that only shows the students who are members of a specific group. Or, because I set um, some of my columns to be in the assignment category, I can have a smart view that only shows me those assignments. So I don't have to see everything, I can just focus on certain pieces. I did mention as well that the external grade column 
is driving the retention center now. So if you're looking at the student achievement, student performance rule that is in the retention center, that is based on the external grade column. And then finally, you can export your letter grades from Blackboard to MyNIU. That's a special tool here that ITS actually built for the faculty at NIU so that you don't have to enter those letter grades a second time in my NIU. If you're interested in that, there is documentation on how to use that on the Teaching with Blackboard site. So with that, I'm going to remind you that there is more information up on our site. And I'm going to pause for a second. If you have any specific questions about your grading system or something I didn't show that you wanted to know about, uh, you can raise your hand and use your microphone or type it into the text chat so that I can uh, respond to your question there. Yes, uh, I, Heike, I believe. Go ahead. You can use your microphone. I can't hear you. Make sure that you've type, tapped the microphone. There you go. Your microphone's on now. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. OK. Um, what do I do? How do I handle this if I have a combined class with undergrads and grad students? So my, um, my letter grades would actually be different. Is there a way to deal with that? Would I make two different groups then? What you may need to do for that, because you, within one column, you can't use the letter grade to automatically assign grades to two groups differently. Um, if you use the scheme that has the C minus, then um, undergraduates who see a C minus will know that they're just getting a C, not actually a C minus, because that's not available for them. When you submit to my NIU, you would need to manually change the students who got the C minus to a C, um, because my NIU won't accept a C minus grade for an undergraduate. Alternatively, you could create a text column you create a column, make the primary display text, and then you can type in the grades manually, the letters at least. And if you put that right next to their final grade, to the percentage, it's a pretty easy process to go through and look at, OK, 94, A, 91, A minus, and enter those as you go down the column. It's a bit cumbersome, can, but you can't differentiate between them. Can I still put that into my NIU then automatically? If you set, if you make that, letter that your final grade column, a text column, primary display text, and enter okay. the letters, then you can set that as the external grade with the green check mark, okay. and that will go to my NIU. Oh, good. Okay. Thank you. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me, and I will stay here for a few more minutes if you do. Uh, but again, thank you so much for joining me today.